The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. And welcome to the December 6th edition of Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani, and uh, Hamilton Talks is a community affairs program that speaks with Hamiltonians who are moving the community forward. Usually we talk to people about what they're doing to move the community forward. We've changed the format this evening a little bit and we've invited back Graham Crawford to Hamilton Talks. And uh, this is Graham's second appearance on our show. Our community knows him well. He's one of our most prolific activists. His background in marketing and strategic consulting serves him well as he takes up causes dear to Hamilton urbanists. His own, he owns a three-story building on James Street North and has turned his history and heritage storefront museum into an attractive gathering place for discussion and engagement. And we welcome Graham to Hamilton Talks again this evening. Thanks, Larry. Graham, it's a pleasure to have you on. Well, nice to be here. Well, and you really are one of our most engaged citizens, and it's great to see that. Well, thank you. It's, uh, I, feel, I feel completely engaged, and I was flattered when you asked uh, if I would come and speak with you about the casino. Well, in fact, yeah. that's the topic for tonight. So we've, we've sort of turned the, uh, the uh, show around a little bit to discuss only one subject, and that's casino uh, for the city of Hamilton. And uh, I have found myself, for some reason, yes. as the poster boy in favor of the proposal. And you, of course, are against it. Now, go figure that you and I would disagree on an important topic like that. Who knew that would be that. possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah who, go I, figure that. Yeah. But here, here's the, uh, what I thought we would do. I thought we sure. would we'd provide maybe a dispassionate, evidence-based uh, perspective on the whole topic of whether a casino makes sense for our community, any community, or not. Uh, but I thought we'd start with just a brief introduction as to why you're against it and why I may be for it. And then we'll look at some evidence that we've uncovered by doing a little bit of research. I know you've done some as well. Sure. And see if we can make some sense for our viewers out of this debate. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Fair enough? No, that's so fair. why don't you tell us then why you are against the idea? I'm only against it because you're for it. <laughs> no, no. Other oh, than I, that. No, seriously, and really, all, all kidding aside, uh, I am not uh, for a casino downtown. I have gone on record as saying that if, we're, if we have to have a casino, let's expand Flamborough. And the reason I want uh, would support that, if necessary, uh, is because of the 3,000 jobs uh, horse racing and rural related jobs that will be lost uh, when Flamborough closes and it will close if the casino is put downtown. So having said that, uh, I really do oppose a casino downtown because of the social implications. Um, there's a ton of research that shows uh, that really the economic benefits are slim to none uh, in terms of growth. Uh, and, uh, but, but the corollary to that is that uh, the increase in problem gamblers, which means increase in social uh, costs to uh, treat those problem gamblers, impact on families and friends, children, uh, are too high. They outweigh any benefits in my view. Uh, and a lot of research has been done by, for example, uh, Dr. David McCune at the Toronto uh, Public Health Board which is kind of damning. I think it's really difficult to put forward a business case for the casino. Um, you know, we can get into you know, details and numbers, but my basic disagreement uh, is that there's no uh, financial upside of any significance, uh, and there is a tremendous social downside uh, that will come, guaranteed, if we have this casino dented. Okay, fair enough, Graham, and we will get into some of the specifics, and essentially, I have found myself wanting to, uh, at the very least, investigate the opportunity and expand the gaming experience for our citizens because I do know from anecdotal evidence that a lot of Hamiltonians enjoy the experience. They want the opportunity to enjoy what a casino has to offer uh, and perhaps the corollary experience around casinos as well. I see them all the time when I go down on the occasion that I do frequent 
the Niagara uh, casino experience, see lots of Hamiltonians. And certainly, since I've written about my support for the idea of, of a casino for Hamilton, a full-fledged casino for Hamilton, people have approached me and they said they agreed with me. Now, they tend to be people, well, of course, who are already at the casino, so they're predisposed to, to uh, uh, appreciate the experience. But essentially, I think if you look at cities that have casinos, they belie the uh, contention that you make, that there's only a downside to the casino and not an upside, and that it increases problems. I admit that there are problems, but they're no worse and no better than if you don't have a casino presence. But most of all, I think that for us to deny an opportunity that's presenting itself is shooting ourselves in the foot again. And for me, a casino district, an entertainment district that contains a casino, is something that would increase the opportunities for Hamiltonians. I see that as a city building exercise, and I think we should explore it. Now, let's get into some of the details for that. Well, sure, because th that's completely counter to what uh, the director of the casino I in uh, Brantford says. Uh, he thought he was going to get all kinds of tourists coming from all over uh, southwestern Ontario, and he, he said as recently as, as uh, this week to CBC Hamilton, that didn't happen. Uh, that the majority, the vast majority of the people who go to the casino uh, live within a 40 kilometer radius. Uh, Montreal's casino, for example, over 90% of the people who go to the Montreal casino are from Montreal. So, well, and so in fact, the mayor of the city of Brantford, and we'll get into the Brantford yeah. example, yeah, mayor uh, has indicated that uh, the money that's generated from the casino presence, uh, in fact, has helped his community develop the downtown and support some of the social programs. And we'll look at some of those statistics as well. But, but le let me t say this, uh, Graham, in, in defense of, of your position, that if we simply had one casino divorced from a district that would be an entertainment district, we wouldn't be doing justice for ourselves. I see a whole district with lots of corollary uses, one of which is a casino presence as a true city building exercise. And if we're smart about it, and if the private sector is really interested in this opportunity, that's what they'd be presenting to us. Well, and I'm not sure they are presenting because no one has presented anything. Well, exactly. Least of all, yeah. uh, OLG. You don't know how much uh, money we will be receiving from the gaming table revenue uh, at this proposed downtown casino, although we suspect it's zero because no one else is getting any money from it. We're being sucker punched by, the, by OLG, in my opinion. Um, that's why I say there isn't a strong enough business case. Of course there's but some. But we haven't seen a business case. How can you say there isn't a strong enough business case because I attended if we haven't seen one? Well, I'll tell you what I did see, Larry. Yeah. I attended both presentations by the OLG executives, including the president and CEO. And uh, there is zero revenue that will be coming from the gaming tables. There may be, may be, up to a 10% uptick in the monies that we currently receive through Flamborough. That could take us to 4.9 to $5 million. That's as good as it gets. No, it isn't. And let, let me tell you, Graham, that I've had some discussions with a very senior member of city staff that indicates to me two things. One, that in fact we're looking at perhaps doubling the $4.5 million at the very least that we receive now from, from the casino. But as well as How? that, How? council, this is what was said to me, and this is a person who would know if I were to reveal it, which I'm not, but this is a person who, who uh, knows what, what uh, he or she is talking about. And council has the opportunity to go back to OLG and say, we will provide support under these conditions, which would mean a greater take. Yeah, well, let but, me you know, that's just the financial yeah, but let me side. interject, Larry. Yeah. If that's true, yeah. that's criminal. The fact that you know something that councillors don't know, that we're going to get double the amount. Uh, let me tell you, the formula has already been, been told to us by OLG. You get five points on the first 400 slot machines. You get two, uh, two points up to two and a half All points right. on the... Well, let's, well, let's, well no, no, but... but up to listen, a thousand. Listen, listen. How, how you double with that formula, <laughs> and when the president and CEO of OLG says in front of our council, in our council chambers, 
there's a potential uptick of 10 percent max. So, 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 you know, I wasn't at that meeting. So let's listen and, to the staff first. And, well, and in fact, it's also been in the newspaper. One of the senior members of, of our staff so was, was the president the and CEO of OLG what, lying? Well, no, but the president of the OLG may be presenting what he wants to give, not what he has to give. And if we're smart about negotiating, we can increase that substantially. But look, I said fair we're going to look at fair the enough. evidence based okay, stuff, so let's enough. have a look at that. Yeah. And this actually supports don't you. Let the, don't let the facts about the uh, CEO and of OLG get in the way in terms no, of what he told the, us. And, and don't let the fact that, that uh, the staff knows because they've been working at this yeah, get you in know, the way. It would be of, nice if they would share it with our elected well, I think, officials. Well, I think they probably have, but, but I don't know that. Well, Listen, Brad Clark. Th there's a, a woman by the name of Sarah Whalens yeah. uh, who has written a very interesting article essentially saying that casinos don't make sense published in Raise the Hammer, and I've plagiarized that. I've told her I was going to do that, and uh, uh, she didn't disagree, so we've done that. And I want to show that because... Uh, now, this was on behalf of the Hamilton uh, Roundtable for Poverty Reduction. Uh, well, yeah. I'm not sure what the yeah, source it was, was it but was, it's yeah. Sarah's uh, research. And I think it's a compelling read sure. because it, it needs... It is good. The downside needs to be looked at. Yeah. There's no question about that. So let's have a look let's, at that, and, and we'll, we'll chat about it. Maybe production can, uh, can uh, show some of the slides. Here's the first one that casinos create local jobs, but they're mostly part-time, low-skilled jobs that do not pull households out of poverty. Do you have a comment on that? That's true. Well, and I would say to you, uh, because I've, I've talked to some of the uh, uh, folks who work at Niagara Casino, that uh, there are jobs, not all of them, but there are jobs that on average pay $50,000, which means some pay more and some pay less. Yeah, the car dealers I, make is that is, is that a bad salary for our residents to, uh, to obtain, a $50,000 salary? Well, uh, of the 300 jobs that might exist, what percentage of them do you think will be over 50 Well, even if there are 10, 10? Is, that, is that, I'm sure that there are more, but even if there are 10 and there are 10 more than we've got now, what's so bad about that? Uh, well, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just not good enough. All right. uh, it, 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 this is my point, though. Of course, what, there's, so, there's always some money in this because OLG is prepared to give us some money. The issue is, is it a worthy business case? Is it, is it good enough to offset the social implications and social costs? So, for example, problem gamblers. Um, there, are, there are tens of thousands of problem gamblers in the province of Ontario. There are 300,000, according to Toronto Public Health, 300,000 at risk for problem gambling. And to treat a problem gambler is between $9,000 and $50,000. So Larry, sure, so we get 10 new jobs at 50K. Well, we, do you think we're gonna have... What's the population, Graham, of people who gamble that get into trouble gambling? 3%. 3%, so 97% of folks who frequent casinos do so responsibly. And of the 3% who do so irresponsibly and get into trouble through a, an addiction, or do you think that the fact that there isn't a local casino stops them from gambling irresponsibly? Well, again, I, maybe you're going to show this with Sarah's research, um, but proximity of the casino to those uh, who are, there's a greater likelihood of people in a disadvantaged neighborhood uh, if they're closer to and it's ease of access to the casino, the, the percentage of problem gambling will double, double. So, so of the three, we're going to put this thing within walking distance of one of our code red neighborhoods, which is the poorest postal code in the country. And we have bingo halls downtown yes, I, I, in proximity. Yes, we do. We have but variety we, stores in downtown that sell scratch and win tickets in proximity. We have. Do internet. you know what the highest bet? The highest bet at the gaming table. Do you know what you're allowed to bet in Ontario? Fifteen thousand dollars. How long do you think it'll take to burn through? 50 grand. But more to the point, how long do you think it'll take to run, burn through 500? But, but do you think that by not having a casino, we are curing that problem? Well, of course. I know people who have gotten in trouble gambling, very prominent people. You yeah. probably know them as well. We do. And we don't have a casino downtown, and yet there's trouble. So are we going to let that because issue... The kind of people we're talking about Are we going to let that issue prevent us from exploring the benefits of uh, the opportunity? Of course, we must never allow things like that to stop us from exploring the benefits. But at some point, we have to rationally put benefits and costs and say, does this still but make Shirley sense? But surely, Graham, you're not saying that if we do not have a casino downtown, and I'm not saying it's going to go downtown, I think the private sector will determine 
where the best location is. Surely you're not saying if we prevent this opportunity, we're going to cure problem gambling. Is that what you're saying? Well, first of all, the private sector will determine where the most profitable location is, yeah. not the best location. You see, I mean, Larry, is but it... But the it, city has something to say about that, though, yeah, right? Very, very little, as it turns out. Well, in fact, I would say that smart negotiations would make a smart location contingent on city approval. So who's, who's doing the smart negotiations well, for us? Well, you know what? The, the, my, one of my issues is that there isn't a politician that's sticking his or her neck out to say, this is what makes sense. We need to see that. Well, I, I, would, I think you're right, by the way. I do agree with you on that. And, and, uh, but I will say this. Brad Clark uh, at least went on the record in council chambers and said that the 4.5 up to 5 million that we might get is, quote, chump change. I agree with He's him. absolutely... And, so and we Brad agree. is a smart guy yeah. and, and isn't afraid of showing some leadership. So he said, why not 20 million? Exactly. Why not 30 million? Why not? Which is the sort of thing that I've been saying as and well. And so would you agree if we bumped it up to that sort of uh, a recompense for us? Well, what I, what I would say, Larry, is that if the, if the financial gain is 30 million and the offsetting uh, costs, in terms of social costs, are... 10 million and there's a 20 million dollar sp spread I think then we have to talk about that okay but, so, at, no, no, so, but so, of course it's about money Larry <laughs> that's why you're but it's saying. not just about money I mean I agree that there needs to be a financial win so we can fund other programs and deal with some of the issues that we're not getting yeah, to in but, terms of but, Sarah's research hang on just let me make this point <laughs> but but yeah, but sure. Graham it's for me it's about city building so it's not just the casino it's about the entertainment center it's about it's about bringing in some some stars that I want to see. I want to see a Christmas show. That's what drew, drew me the last time to the casino area. Uh, the, the restaurants and hotels. It's about a whole district. I mean, you were anxious to put a stadium in the West Harbor, which might be a location, by the way, uh, that only would, would uh, see activity nine times a year as a city building exercise. Why not a, a, an entertainment district? Because we've already got an entertainment district. Uh, we have Hamilton Place, which is a fantastic theater. When I came back... It's a standalone. Well, it's a standalone at the moment, fair enough. It has a studio theater. There's a convention center attached to it. There's a, there's a very impressive art gallery attached to it. There's a hotel across the street. The Mercantis say they want to build a hotel downtown, so I say go for it. Uh, we, we've got Mr. Vranich building a hotel uh, just <laughs> a, half a block away. And we don't have a casino downtown. I so. agree. So, so I said we were going to have a dispassionate discussion, and here we are into the passion. And poor <laughs> Sarah is waiting for her research to be yes. shown. Let's run through that, because these are some of the points that you're making. Low-income households have lower incidences of gambling, but spend proportionately more, because they have little. So if they spend yeah. a little and they don't it's have very much, it's a yeah. lot. The next slide. Low-income households that gamble at casinos spend more than double the average spent by low-income households on gambling overall. Again, so that's a damning bingo statistic. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, think, I think Sarah's referencing in terms of the other kinds of gambling, it's bingo and lottery cards. Right. Yeah. The next one, proximity to, this is the point you were making earlier, is associated with greater participation in gambling and greater expenditure. I would maintain that the bingo hall and the variety store, all of these contribute to that as well. Mm -hmm. The next one, Research on the relationship between proximity to a casino and gambling disorders yields mixed results. And she follows that up by saying that low-income populations have higher rates of gambling disorders than the general population. But again, if you put that into the perspective of the minority, the 3%, uh, some of whom are in trouble anyway uh, because of other opportunities to gamble, we really are looking at a factor that's serious but I think can be mitigated. Well, but, but, oh, but we need to, to bear in mind, though, that while 3% th uh, or, or possibly slightly more, but it isn't a lot more, uh, would be uh, declared as problem gamblers, and generally speaking, they self-declare, according to what uh, we're told. But like anything else, Larry, what about the 5% that are just on the other side of that line uh, who are getting there? And then, of course, there's, you know, maybe there's 30% that will never get there, not even close. But, but if we simply say 3% is the max, it'll never be any worse. Of course, there's a whole bunch of people just on the other side of that line who are starting to have well, some but, it, but in fact, though, the police chief in areas where there are casinos have indicated that there isn't any difference 
post or, or pre in terms of crime. People who I, I never said anything about crime. But, I'm talking no, no, about but, families but, but, trying no. to survive, trying to feed their kids, trying to put their kids through school, trying to pay their rent. I'm not talking about crime. And, and, those, and those who also look at those trends have also indicated that there's no appreciable difference uh, whether you've got the casino or not in terms of the incidents such as that. But let's look at the other side as well. I said that we had some statistics as to what Brantford does. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting that we need to replicate uh, what Brantford does, but... Please don't ever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oops, sorry. But here we go. So since 1999, Brantford has spent 14 million plus uh, of its 48 million plus casino money on improving the downtown, a direct line between the casino and the revitalization of downtown. Surely our downtown needs help. I mean, you as a property owner look forward to improving our downtown and we're seeing some steps in the right direction what's wrong with using some money to help with that oh, I couldn't agree more the question is where does the money come from the fact is the uh, the 4.4 million dollars we've been receiving all these years uh, number one goes into general revenues now but so it disappears uh, but two let's let's just be clear about this if I pulled a hundred dollars out of my pocket right now and that represented the city of Hamilton's annual budget, operating budget. The amount of money that is represented by the casino revenues we get is 30 cents. 30 cents on $100. It's less than one-third of 1%. One People are using this casino as if this money we're going to get is going to transform Hamilton. If one-third of one percent can transform this city of our annual budget, then what I would suggest happen is that councillors put some pressure on si Chris Murray and, and senior, the senior management team to find no. one-third of one well, percent. Well, I'm certainly not suggesting that the casino is going to transform the city, well, but it's it a won't. piece well, of it may, the but puzzle. Not in the right it's, way. it's a piece of the puzzle that will help. Here's another uh, piece of information from the Brantford. Well, in fact, this is an anecdotal comment. Having casinos like peeling an onion, some parts of it will make you cry, but you have to go through it to get to the good parts. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if, if that's, that's totally consistent, but nevertheless, it's pointing out that there are some good sides and some not so good sides to the experience. And here's how Brantford spent its casino dollars. So the downtown got 14.1 million bucks. Health got 4.2 million. Policing, 1.9. The Visitor Center, 2.5. The Gretzky Sports Center, 7.1. And so on down the list. So what, what you know, we, we can't dismiss even 30 cents out of $100 when you translate that into a $1.5 billion budget that the city has. Anything that we have that will contribute towards supporting infrastructure, supporting social programs, supporting recreational yeah. have programs. Have you got Hamilton's list? Well, no, I don't have a Hamilton's no. list because... You know why? Well, well, because it goes into general revenue. Because we don't have one. Well, it goes into general revenue, but that money is used to support all sorts of programs. It used to be dedicated. That money was dedicated towards... For, for a few years. For a few years, and then it was taken away, uh, uh, and I think that was a, a mistake. But nevertheless, it happened. But the fact that it goes into general revenue doesn't mean that it's wasted. Look, if somebody is prepared, however it is done to give the city or to contribute to the city's operating budget four and a half million dollars I think that's a good thing but you can't just look at that and say well all that, all that matters is the number because it's where the money comes from that one has to also look at it also you also have to look at the implications and in this case there are some implications that we seriously need to question the fact that we would put this casino within walking distance of a code red neighborhood but we don't know that nor, nor do you well, sure I do, Larry. They, 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 downtown's downtown. But what if the private sector decides that, that maybe the mountain is the best place for a casino? Well, they may very well, but I'll tell you. I mean, I've been reading tea leaves as a consultant for many, many years. And when the OLG say, uh, where is the highest concentration of population? They don't talk about ease of access, driveway to driveway experience. They talk about concentration of population. And the fact is the highest density area in this city is right downtown. That's what they're talking about. That's what their spokesperson has said. Their spokesperson insulted Flamborough by saying, and I quote, where's Flamborough? Is it close to where the people are? End quote. So, I mean, they've been telegraphing where this thing's going. Fair enough. Graham... 
You know what happened again? No. Yeah, we're out of time again. <laughs> well, well, I've convinced you, right? We should absolutely, look at yeah. Let's, uh, you know what? I, uh, yeah, I'll bet on that, Larry. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Listen, it's always a pleasure yeah, to like talk this. to you, Graham. Yeah. And, and let me just say to the viewers out there that this is a debate that people should become engaged in uh, because the points on both sides, I think, are deserving of our attention. And we also need to help our politicians make up their minds one way or the other. Uh, I honestly believe that we can't become the ultimate nanny state in terms of deciding how we're going to protect our, our brothers and our neighbors. I think we need to provide opportunities for everybody, but by the same token, we also need to uh, do things with our eyes wide open. So as we march forward and uh, Council makes a decision, hopefully uh, the people that are watching this program are going to pay attention to all of the details that Graham has been talking about and I've offered some opinions on as well. Good. Graham, thanks for hey, coming thanks on so. Hamilton Talks Appreciate again. I really do. And thank you for watching. Uh, we are going to see you one week from uh, tonight when we'll have another Hamiltonian talking about some important things in our city.